Hey, everybody, welcome to Breakfast All Day. Matt, Christy, Alonzo, I have not seen Honeyland. They have. Go. But you should. Yeah. It's about Macedonian beekeepers. It's got good buzz. I'm in. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that sounds like a really boring topic, but the way this is structured and the way it is shot is so gorgeous and so immersive and so riveting. There is so much legitimate tension here. It feels like you're watching, like, like neoclassicist cinema. Yeah, I, it's so I thought good. it was a narrative. Describe. For, like, yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. these two uh, Turkish filmmakers spent three years um, with, how do you pronounce her name, Hatzid? I think um, I'm going to mess up her name. Yeah. Hatids, I think is her name. Uh, she's a uh, beekeeper in Macedonia and she's been raising bees and harvesting honey uh, the way she's learned to in kind of a traditional way that's been done for decades, if not centuries. Um, and she lives by herself with her, or she lives with her mother uh, in a very simple existence. And she, from time to time goes into town and sells her honey and brings some food home. And there's an intimacy that the filmmakers get because they spent so much time with her. Um, and then this Turkish family comes in. Um, I believe they're Turkish. They are. They're, they're nomadic, right. but they are Turkish. Right. And also the filmmakers we should mention are actually Macedonian. I look oh, okay. Tamra Kotevska and Lubomir Stefanov. So Continue. This, this family comes in uh, initially with cattle and, you know, she gets along with them just fine. And then they see her raising bees and they decide they want to start raising bees. Um, and you know the father the patriarch of this family uh, starts to raise them and starts to harvest them in a way that is not you know I hate to use the word sustainable but in a way that that really messes with things and it's almost this microcosm of over farming Mm -hmm. Um, but the movie never really makes you feel that way it's because you also see the price that happens for when you're not raising things you know for doing things quote unquote the wrong way Um, and it's tense and it is heartbreaking and um, the emotional intimacy that the filmmakers get with all the parties involved uh, it makes this this is a perfect movie yeah this is absolutely a perfect movie and a lot of it is in various languages not all of it you know I'd say maybe about half of it if that is actually subtitled um, and that's kind of okay because you understand what's going uh, you, on. You understand all you need to understand. I this movie is amazing. I can't recommend it highly enough. Um Yeah, and it's you know, it's also not just intimate, it's also unflinching. You know, you see this toddler like just get stung. Oh and nobody does anything. Oh right? yeah. Like, because like, they have like, so many kids and they have so much to do in this massive piece of land that they're farming and that like there aren't enough people to, to to do everything, and there are like too many kids, and the kids don't get watched, and so like and the toddler are, right. and the older kids are so lippy. They are well, yeah. And well, the, <laughs> although one of the kids sort of forms this really nice, sweet friendship with the beekeeper, right. and and they become buddies, and and he becomes like her little helper, and you know she her entire life has been living in this really remote part of Macedonia and taking care of her mother. Like, and you begin yeah. to see when she, she has this connection with this kid, you begin to see like whatever untapped maternal instinct she might've had, she gets a, a glimpse of, and it, right. it's a whole other side to her. And, and, this and so, I'm sorry, so when, when things do go poorly with the family, like that's one of the heartbreaking elements of it is like that changes yeah. and gets taken away from and, her. And this movie doesn't necessarily, you know, put her on a pedestal. Um, it doesn't romanticize her. Um, it's very matter of fact about things, but mm-hmm. it, in doing that, you know, there's a scene where, you know, she's what you start to see is that the family that's raising the bees because the bees because he's over harvesting the honey, the honey, the, his bees are going and invading her hives and stealing her honey, which is killing her bees. And so she goes to greater lengths to hide her hives. And then there's a moment where you see that she hasn't hidden them well enough and it's just horrifying um and you know the emotion of just this day-to-day life yeah i you know again like this movie isn't i don't want to make it sound like it's romanticizing anything it's not Um, but it's you know it captures the drama of just kind of somebody trying to survive and somebody trying to live their life and i i was just blown away by this it's incredibly beautiful too like there are so many shots over and over and over again i was wondering while i'm watching it like how did they get that shot? Like just the intimacy of after being out there for three years, you better right, get some good right. shots. Right, right. But the in, <laughs> but, but the fact that they were able to achieve that intimacy yeah. is a huge, you know, a right. huge feat in itself. That they are inside this little hut with the beekeeper and her mom 
for quiet, seemingly mundane moments that over time have more significance and you really feel like you get to know them. And then there's this incredible widescreen imagery. There's one shot of her toward the end walking across the snow yeah. with his dog following behind right. her. And they just, they're just they up high like on a ridge to get this shot. And you just watch her walk across the snow. And it is riveting. The opening shot. The opening shot yes. where she's on a cliff oh, yeah. to go and find the this hive, hive yeah. right? and, and grab a queen and start a new hive. Like I guess it's a drone shot. It feels like, but you, you know, you feel like, oh my god! At any moment, somebody's gonna fall off the side of this cliff. They must have been walking behind her on the cliff. I guess. I mean, it's yeah. There's that's one of those shots anyway, where it's like, how do we movie. get this? Um, and I find it so telling that the bees never sting her. She has this wonderful kind of like sunny way about her, right. and like or a if purity, they do, we don't see it, a right? purity. Right. Right, they don't show it, but right. like a, she's been doing it. But it speaks to the fact that she's been doing it long enough that she knows how to handle these bees. She sings to them. She right. has an affection for them. Right. She appreciates and respects them. And so, like we don't see them sting her. And then the other guy comes in and he right. he the gets freaking attacked. Left and right. Like yeah. from the beginning, if I find that like yeah, just a, a telling metaphor right. here. He just comes <laughs> blundering through, and everybody's getting stung, and yeah. Anyway, it's great. Honeyland. You think you don't need a documentary about Macedonian beekeepers in your life, but you will be wrong. Yes, you do. This <laughs> is, you know, this is that rare film. Like, this is why this medium exists, yep. right? This is, if you think about what film is capable of and why film is amazing, you know, especially even documentaries, this is one of the best examples I can think of right. of what this medium is capable of taking a life that you would never have known about mm-hmm. and never thought about. And honestly, in the grand scheme of things, really isn't that big a deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just makes it riveting and you empathize with almost all parties involved and it's unforgettable. Yeah. 10. Yeah, 10. All right, we're saying 10. Is it 100% on the tomato meter? So, you know, if you don't trust us, trust all the critics. Okay. All of them. We I'll all say this. I'll Long, see it. I'll please, see it. I, yeah. I mean, I can very easily imagine this Bees. getting nominated for the Oscar and maybe even winning. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, it will, be, it, will get, it will get nominated for sure. How, uh, how wide is it opening? Do we know? I don't it opened Hardly. last week. We did it on film week right. last week. Well, okay. keep, an, keep eye an eye out. Keep an eye out. If it's not yeah. in your area yet, at some point it will either play or eventually be streaming. So, you know, keep a lookout. Thanks for watching. Like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us at BeFast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And do visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash day, where we talk about movie news, trailers, TV recaps, all kinds of extra goodies for you, our members. And uh, you know what? It keeps happening. If you know somebody who was a watcher <laughs> of What the Flick and is like, hey, what happened to those guys? Tell them. We're now breakfast all day. Bye. Bye.